Well, hi there, guys. This is your host, ID Jester. Thanks for checking out my video. Once again, we're going to be looking at the John Tiller software, kind of an introductory series for people that are new to it or haven't uh, looked at it for a, a while and are interested in getting back into it. Again, these are just uh, helpful tutorial tip uh, type videos that are just trying to show some of the things uh, that can help you understand and manage the game a little bit easier. Uh, this time we're going to be specifically talking about the, uh, the interface and uh, things that you can do to make things a little bit easier for you to see uh, and understand what's going on. So I would highly recommend uh, your first couple games. You just go in and you play the uh, basic scenario, getting started Hill 192, and then play the other starting scenario, which is the uh, Utah scenario. Uh, just to get your feet wet and when you do that um, I would recommend that uh, you uh, play with the uh, allies as manual and then the uh, axis as uh, automatic uh, but without the fog of war on so this way you can just see what's going on you can see the units uh, you can you know you don't have to worry about uh, you know the fog of war basically uh, happening. So you can kind of understand what's going on when the computers take their turn. You can see what they're doing and uh, you're not in for any too many surprises. So just just try those out. Uh, and then just, uh, you know, just start moving some counters around and understanding the basic concepts. But uh, things that I would do that I highly recommend is the first thing I would do is go into my settings tab and I would uh, uncheck beep on error. Because you're going to be making a lot of errors when you're trying to move units. Like if I click this and I go, oh, it would be beep, 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 beep. What's going on? What's going on? Whenever you do something and it's not working, look down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And it's basically going to tell you why uh, you can't do something. So in this case, no unit has been selected to move. Oh, okay. So unit wasn't selected. That's why it's not doing anything. Uh, so just get rid of that annoying beeping sound that just beeps all the time. Uh, so that helps. I think a little bit. Next thing I would do is look at the actual toolbar. And I'm not sure what the default is anymore. If you're familiar with John Tiller uh, games, this is kind of the default bar they've used since 1999. But they do have a new updated graphic looking bar. And I think it's much easier and there's a lot more icons on it. And of course, you can choose your different sizes as well. There's a medium one. You get two rows and your icons are a little bit bigger. Uh, choose one and stick with it so that way you know where the icons are when you go to use them. It'll prevent you from going through all the different tabs a lot if you understand them. And the other thing is uh, make sure you uh, start learning some of the keyboard shortcut keys. Uh, like if I want to uh, see what this, where this unit can move to, I can hit the H key and I can see all the spaces it can move to. Uh, so start learning your keyboard shortcuts or at least know where that icon is on the, um, the bar here. I'm not even sure where it is on this setup because again, uh, you should find one that you like and just stick with it. So that way you'll know where it is all the time. They are color coded uh, for the different modes. Uh, but I'm used to seeing it in a different layout, so I'm not sure where it is on the bum, 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 bum. It's probably over here, right here. here yep, reachable hexes. There it is. Uh, so same thing, I can click it this way or I can hit the H key. If you're not sure what the keys are, you can actually, a lot of them will actually tell you. Uh, if we go like here, you can see the actual keys that you can use. Uh, so, yeah, your toolbar, you want to uncheck the beep on air. Uh, you want to adjust your toolbar. Uh, and then I would go under my view and I would click on divisional markings. I think that's a big one uh, because it'll help you understand which units work together, which how they're part of a certain organization. For me, I'm really bad at that. I was never part of the army, so I don't, I always get confused when you're talking about company, battalion, is it bigger than a regiment, lower than a regiment? I always I have to think, I have to think about it because it's not intuitive for me. So having these divisional markings on 
has really helped me uh, learn a little bit more about it. Uh, next thing I would do is use my jump dialog box. And I don't use this mostly for view. I use this mostly to see where my units are, where the enemy units are, and where the victory points are. I can see how close I am because all my units are going to be in blue. Axis, uh, axis are in red, allies are in blue, and you can see how close you are to the different objectives. You can see where the objectives are. Uh, and you might need to scroll this around on different maps to find all the different victory point locations. Uh, speaking of which, this game is all based upon who uh, has the most victory points at the end. And a lot of those are going to be based upon uh, the uh, victory locations. Uh, so you can see in this scenario here, uh, we're playing as the allies. Uh, turn, uh, player one is always the attacker. Player two is always the defender in scenarios, or mostly, I would say. Uh, there might be a couple scenarios that are different than that, but uh, I would say 95% of them or so. No, player one is usually the attacker. Player two is the defender. So if you're a player one, you know that you have to get objectives. If you're player two, you know you have to uh, protect your uh, objectives. Uh, go to your victory point location and make sure you check and see, okay, so for a minor victory, I need at least 40 points. For a major victory, I need 50. Okay, 50 points, minor 40. Okay, what do I need to do to get that? Well, we can see here there is 10, 10, 10, and way up here, there's 10. So there's only 40 victory points in victory point locations. I need 50 for a major victory. So how do I get that? Well, that is by outdueling and doing more damage to the enemy than they do to you. So you can't be willy-nilly wasting your units, taking extra damage by not playing mm, smart or not playing uh, within the capabilities of the gaming system. And we'll get into further details on, you know, what you can do to kind of help yourself along, uh, giving you different strategies and tips and hints and stuff like that throughout this tutorial series, just to kind of help you understand how am I going to get more uh, damage to the enemy than they're going to do to me? And what, how do I, how do I um, prevent taking a lot of unnecessary losses at the time? Uh, so make sure you understand where your victory points are. Make sure you know what, where they're located or the approximate location of them. Uh, down here, if I click on any hex that doesn't have a unit in it, uh, actually, if I click a hex that does have a unit down here, uh, you can see the actual time of the scenario, the date, um, and the number of turns, the conditions, and whether it's a dawn, and a day turn, or a night turn. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, so if I click on any hex, a lot of information will be important. Uh, uh, there is a lot of information given about a uh, hex. One of the things you should check is the visibility. Okay, in this case, it's eight hex, uh, six hexes, right? Six hexes, I can click around. It looks like six hexes. It's going to be uh, for at least this turn. It is a dawn turn, so when it turns to day, it might actually change. So that's something you should also try to remember. So uh, I've got six hexes of visibility. The enemy's got six hexes as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. This unit can see my unit right there, and I can see him as well. doesn't mean I can actually shoot him. If I want to find out more information about my unit, I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to look. So the two things... To keep in mind about uh, each unit is whether it's a hard unit or a soft unit. So soft, so soft units are your squishy targets, uh, usually men. Hard targets are usually things like vehicles and guns, but that's not always the case. If we look at this hex right here, you can see it's got a squishy target in there. It's got a man in there, a couple guns. So I should be able to shoot that as a, um, a soft target. But the thing to keep in mind is this is actually in a bunker and any unit inside a bunker is considered a hard target. 
So they're hidden inside the bunker. So even though it's a squishy target, uh, it's still considered a hard target. So things to, that, things to keep in mind uh, when you're looking at the different hexes, make sure you find out whether it's a soft target or a hard target. So this, once again, is a bunker. And even though it's got an infantry unit in here, it is going to be considered a hard target. So that means when I go and look at my unit here, you can see my infantry unit can only shoot one space away uh, for hard targets. It's got a value of eight attack and then the range afterwards. Soft targets, I got an attack value of eight and I can shoot them up to three spaces away. So if this infantry unit was not inside a bunker, I could shoot it up to three spaces away as long as I had a line of sight to it. Uh, and um, since it's inside a bunker, I need to be one space away, which means I'm going to move my squishy target through this open area and get shot at by all these targets that are sitting inside their nice comfy bunkers, which means they're going to be taking a lot of losses. So we got to minimize those as best we can. The best way we can do that is to actually um, switch to a mode called visible hexes. And I can actually click on a hex and or a unit and I can see what's visible to that unit. If there was uh, uh, hill hexes or hexes that are not all located at the same uh, height difference, there might be some different uh, blocking um, uh, you know, uh, tree lines or woods or buildings, villages, hexes, uh, things that are block line of sight. If we come down back to this guy over here, you can see behind him here is an orchard. This unit can't see behind the orchard. There is a, a village here in this hex. So if I was in this hex, I can, I can see into the village. I can't see beyond it. But for us up here, you can see pretty much no matter where we go, we're going to be out in the open here. Let's go up to the north and see if there's anything. So that's another thing to uh, actually keep in mind is you can click on any hex. It doesn't need to be, be a unit. I can click anywhere and see what's visible from that hex. Looks like pretty much everything is going to be visible. We're going to be out in the open here. So that's something else we should keep in mind and something we should try to really think about uh, before we're even uh, at the point where we're running around uh, of moving units around because if we're just haphazardly moving units around we're going to be taking a lot of losses and as we looked at our victory point thing already um, if we were to get all the objectives every, all four of them and we were just to battle the enemy equal uh, we would only end up with a minor victory so we got to outduel the enemy and we need to get victory point locations if we only get, say, three of the victory point locations, and we really need to really, really outdo them to get a minor victory, and we got to be excellent, superb to get a major victory. So uh, something to keep in mind when you're uh, moving and uh, thinking about uh, what you're doing with your different units. So different uh, things that you want to look at, reachable hexes, visible hexes, these are going to be your two most important ones. Visible hexes is V, reachable hexes is H. I can click on a unit, I can highlight it, and I can see where it can move to by hitting an H key. So I know, okay, well, if I wanted to, you know, if I didn't have this highlighted, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to bring this unit up, and it's going to move into here, and then I'm going to assault this hex. Well, if I hit my H key, I can see that's not possible. The most I can do is move it up here, and that'll be, that'll be the most I can do. Uh, one thing that you might want to try and learn is to actually turn on save movement costs. The save movement costs, what it'll do is it'll allow me to uh, move, show me the further the furthest this unit can move, but still have one opportunity to shoot as well. So you might want to use that command as well. Uh, that's save movement costs under your commands. You can see the difference if I turn it off then I don't have that option, I can move even farther. So things to think about and uh, just to help you kind of get manageable uh, for this. Again, visibility, clicking on the different spaces around. If I click on this hex, I can see where the enemy can see. 
hmm, okay, I can see that this enemy, he can see all the way to here, so I might not want to move my units too far in then, so this guy might not be able to see. Depending on his units, he might not be able to reach that anyways. He can actually shoot six bases with the machine gun, though. So that's stuff you, uh, you know, obviously with the fog of war turned off. If the fog of war was turned on, you would not know what units are there. You would not know how many units are in that space. You wouldn't be able to look at all their stats and stuff. But for the first few games, it's not cheating. It's learning and understanding how to play the game. And that's, uh, that's, part, of the, uh, that's part of the game. That's part of, that's part of learning the system. So hopefully this was informative for you guys. If it was, leave your thoughts, comments, suggestions below. And we'll see you in the next episode. We're going to talk about a few more important things that you should think about and learn about in uh, any of the John Tiller uh, software games. Of course, you can go to John johntillersoftware.com and look at all the different games that you can purchase from there. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching, guys.